written by William Shakespeare in the 16th century and admirably covers our outlook on this cold, crisp, frosty winter's day. Don't you think? We often refer to the seasons when we're exploring the aspects of our own emotion. The gentle breeze of springtime is your name. You are the spring that visits the winterlands. And who do you think wrote that? Shakespeare, miss. I wrote that, you nasty boy. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, the seasons dominate our lives. And from the earliest times, man has attempted to discover why they happen. And through his art and literature, explore them as elements of his life. So, spring is birth. Summer growth, autumn. Old age. Old age. Winter. Death. Death, decay, and darkness. This month we'll do a project on the seasons. We'll explore what man has written about them. We'll see what our own feelings are about them. We'll see how they've influenced poetry, art, literature, and music. And perhaps, perhaps if we can interest the other teachers, we can look at their impact on science, mathematics, and in the social science area. <sighs> there. What do you think? I think it's a marvellous suggestion. The tea bag is such an unsightly and uncivilized institution, Mr. Quinn. You'll be interested to know we're doing a project on the seasons, all four, and across the curriculum approach. It should be very exciting. There, I found it. Oh, Mr. Scott kindly offered to track down a cassette recorder so that the students could listen to some Vivaldi. Well, it took some doing. I mean, I knew I'd seen it somewhere, but for the life of me, I couldn't remember where. Then I remembered the broom cupboard. <laughs> Room cupboard. I can't think what's happened to the power cord. Mrs. Harding has told me about the project you're doing on the uh, seasons, is it? And uh, has suggested that we may be able to look at them through the uh, area of uh, mathematics. I have given the matter a great deal of thought and have decided that we may best uh, begin by looking at the role that uh, geometry plays in nature. I have decided to begin by showing you some slides of snowflakes and the uh, intricate and beautiful designs that uh, occur in these crystals. Uh, has anybody seen an extension cord? No, I remember. We put them away to save them. From what? Well, look, Mrs. Harding, you can't expect me to run around keeping tabs on all those things. I've got an English department to run. Well, someone should. Who? <laughs> We're overworked. And besides, I reckon a lot of that stuff's overrated. Our main job is still to teach kids to read and write. But what's the point of teaching children to read if you don't give them a good enough reason? You can't get by in the world otherwise. You mean filling in checks and scanning the racing form? 
I'd prefer to have a whole civilization of illiterates that people regard reading in such a limited way. And yet, we've got all the equipment to make learning such an exciting, challenging, moving, and even dangerous pastime. Why on earth turn our backs on it? We haven't got the time. Oh, Mr. Scott. one broken, all the reels missing, seven film projectors, 16 slide projectors, and one photographic enlarger. The missing are microphones, power leads, plugs, carousels. The list is endless. The items were found in the senior master staff room, the first aid room, under the front desk, and in the broom cupboard. I tried to show some slides on snowflakes yesterday, and the globe was blown. Two years I've been with the maths department, I didn't even know we had slides. The globe is always blown. Look, what we need is some central depository where all this equipment can be stored and some way of letting all the teachers know what we have. That'll mean extra work for someone. Well, I'd certainly appreciate some form of centralisation. Perhaps you could organise something for us, Mrs Harding. Me? Well, I don't have the time myself. Uh, anybody else? We'd really appreciate it, Mrs Harding. housed in the library. Then, of course, I need somebody responsible for the broken equipment to see that it gets fixed. I would like to delegate Mr. Scott. Then we need shelving, a cataloging system, a special assurance that all departments will cooperate. Then there's this business of the video recording equipment. At present, its utilization is a very haphazard affair. Also, I feel that this, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole question of cassette tapes, records, production kits, projects and materials that are simply lying around all over the place. Mr. Quinn, you haven't listened to a word I've said. It's not good enough, Mr. Quinn. Mrs. Harding, we need the projector in the science lab. We use it all the time. Then you can have it, Mr. Blake. All you have to do is fill out the label card, name, date. But you can't expect us to come up here every time we want to use the equipment. There's no trouble over a long-term loan as long as we know where it is. We need a screen as well. Fill out the label. What's the video equipment doing here? When it was in the staff room, we could all use it. If you could find a videotape. From now on, the library assistant will be doing all the recording. Look, all you have to do is fill in the form, stating the program you want taped, time, name, date, etc. Hand it to Mrs. Knight. She'll organise it for you. Oh, and you'll be needing these. This is a monthly bulletin from the ABC outlining the coming radio and television programmes. Radio programmes can also be ordered through Mrs. Knight. And this little document has been prepared by the librarian and tells you exactly what equipment we have in stock. And this is a list of the existing video tapes and cassette tapes. The ones marked with an asterisk 
permanent acquisitions of the library. There. I think you're all set. Thank you. Oh, and if the children wish to use the equipment, they go straight to the librarian and just ask for it. You're allowing children to use this? If it helps them to learn and they can use it. Why not? Extraordinary. Uh, will you be needing an extension cord for that projector? You've got extension cords? Several. You've got extension cords? watch these slides, I want you to notice the many varied geometric shapes that you see in these snowflakes. the books are just dumped here at the end of every term. My Huckleberry Finns were all over the place. I'm still four short and heaven knows how many books there should be altogether. It's a disgrace to the English language. I think you're over-dramatising things, Mrs Harding. It's adequate. Adequate? We're not living in the days of the French Revolution, Mr Scott. I've got more to do with my time than to go burrowing around like a wombat in a musty old room looking for books. And it's not just the textbooks, Mr Quinn. Every department has its own hoard carefully secreted behind the toaster or the washing machine. Not to mention the project kits, film strips, technical manuals, slide sets, Romeo maps and other activities. After you've been here a while, you learn the ropes. Oh, roasted elephants. To work in this school, Mr Quinn, one has to have the nose of Sherlock Holmes and the sensory perception of the Dalai Lama. But, Mrs Harding, this is a school, not a filing cabinet. You can't be expected to be able to put your finger immediately on anything you want. I'm a teacher, Mr. Scott. I'm here to teach. Give me the tools. Why must you insist on hiding them from me? After all, the rest of the world has long since passed into the second half of the 20th century. I think she's over keen at the moment. It'll wear off when she realizes what we're all up against. Right, this'll do. Well, we've looked at the seasons through the eyes of a great many people down through the ages. Now it's your turn. It's your turn to examine your own feelings and emotions in relation to winter. How do you see it? What difference does it make to your life? Now remember, you can choose any medium you like, make your statement in your own way, and enjoy yourselves. Now, off you go. not good enough. No one can find anything. We need the books catalogued. We need things put on shelf.
time for recriminations. Yes, but in the past I've tried to get you to do something about your resources. We're just so limited when you refuse to help. And now we start with a clean slate. Has anyone got any suggestions? Well, for a start, I think...